so count on her will be right right now. You're on. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is MMA Head to Head. I'm Trent Standing. I'm Danny Perry with Mass Media. We are here at Rumble at the Roseland 65, downtown Portland, Oregon, in the Roseland Theater. We have a super card tonight. Three title fights and a super fight. Our main event is a girl title fight at 125 pounds. Emily Whitmire and Emily Corso going to be a great fight. The FCFF is known for bringing in the best talent from not only around the state of Oregon, but the entire Northwest. Here we have next to us, Corey Wyatt. Hey. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Corey. I'm Corey Wyatt, professional uh, mixed martial artist. Um, I'm here with one of my students, uh, Josh Bird, making his uh, amateur debut today. It's pretty exciting. He's been training really, really hard for it for, what, six, seven months? Yep, six months now. Yep. So, uh, Josh, tell us a little bit of your training, how you got into MMA. Were you a fan before and decided, hey, I'm going to go start training? What motivated you to get into the gym, start rolling around? Well, first of all, it was a uh, New Year's resolution. I was 255 pounds and wanted to change my life, man. And I was like, all right, so I love MMA, you know, I wanted to get into it. So, I changed my life and I uh, got in the gym, Midtown. Seen Corey, man, just started training. Six months later, I lost 70 pounds. So do you have any background awesome. that got you in into MMA before? Did you wrestle in high school or did you take karate as a kid? No, no, just, you know, sometimes just sparring on the trampoline, you know. <laughs> just what, that kind of fun. Was <laughs> Backyard it, brawling. Was it intimidating to you at all or did you watch the sport and say, hey, these guys have a lot of respect and go in? Tell us kind of you know, your, your first little bit for those people that haven't gotten into it and want to get into it. Tell us a little bit how the first couple well, months uh, went. Yeah, you know, on TV it looks like, you know, oh yeah, I could do that, but man, after two months in the gym, yeah, I got real intimidating, getting punched in the face. It was hard to get back in there, you know, but I, I was disciplined, I wanted to stay hungry and stay strong in this and uh, keep coming back, man, it'll pay off, you know, and uh, you'll humble yourself and be respectful and respect everyone else, and that's what comes with training in MMA. Hey, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like uh, you starting out at a heavier weight and what your cardio was like when you started out versus what your cardio looks like today? Oh, I, I feel way lighter. Uh, before, when I was 255, I was real heavy. It was hard to move. You know, I could only do it for 30 minutes. Now I'm in the gym for two and a half hours, three hours training, being Shark Tank by 10 guys puked seven times last week I'm <laughs> nice I'm ready to go I'm so so you were 200 plus today you have a fight at 185 pounds what'd you weigh in at weighed in at 184.5 under a little bit nice nice so uh tell us a little bit about, about your style now are you, do you like to stand up slug it out are you competent on the ground do you consider yourself a jujitsu master where are you most comfortable definitely most comfortable on uh standing up with my hands and striking and, uh, you know, moving, staying on my feet and uh, dodging his punches and looking to counter. Uh, I'm solid on the ground, you know, I've been only training six months, so, you know, I'm inexperienced there, but, uh, but I'm, a, I'm a fighter, man. I'm going to try hard. I'm not going to tap. <laughs> now, you're fighting Daniel Phil from L.A. Boxing. As the name implies, we would think that he's a stand-up boxer, but I know we've seen a couple of the L.A. boxing guys here. They do work their ground game but it seems like they do prefer to stand up and go on their feet more. Does this play into your game plan more? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm stoked. I've, I've been expecting him, you know, during training this, uh, pre preparing for him. Uh, he's going to come in and shoot. So if he wants to stand, I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm hoping for that. Nice, nice. Have you seen your opponent? Did you see him weigh in? No, I haven't seen him. I didn't get a face off with him either. I was kind of disappointed, but, you know. How, how tall are you? 6'2". 6'2", so you're pretty tall for 185. Do you know how tall he is? Yeah, he's 5'9". So you're going to have quite a bit of reach advantage on him. Nice. So game plan wise, we're uploading this. I hope he's not watching. But game plan wise, you want to give us a little hint on how you see the fight going? Uh, right now for me, my game plan is 1-1, uh, 1-2, one, 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 and then <laughs> knee, knee. <laughs> nice. It's on the ground, get up. Have you done any preparation at all uh, for the ground game? Just if he's going to take you down. A lot of guys, they come in here 
and if they're if they don't have any kind of ground training, it tends to be uh, rear naked choking out in the first round. Yeah, luckily, you know, training at Midtown MMA, a lot of uh, good guys come in and train, and there's collegiate wrestlers in there, uh, guys Southern Oregon. So I mean, he's been taxing me weekly. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you did not have any wrestling background in high school or anything like that. No, I was a basketball player, basketball and football. <laughs> right on. Yeah. That was the same, so I could relate. <laughs> awesome. That's going to be great. Nice. Thank you. Well, it's good hearing from you. Josh, best of luck tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Midtown guys always come in here. We've seen a lot of Midtown guys in here. They always come in shape. They always put on great performances. And uh, looking forward to that fight tonight. Right on. Thank you. All right. Yes, Appreciate Josh, it. nice to... Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Thanks for Corey. coming on. Yep. Thanks, Thanks, Corey. Appreciate so it. So as, as Heather wrangles up our next fighter here today, let's kind of go through a little bit of the card. Like I said, our main event tonight, Emily Whitmire, Emily Corso. Uh, our 125 title is up tonight here at the FCFF. Brian, I have a hard time with this. Sue me, I believe, versus Alex Corrales. Now, these two met earlier in the year. Um, in February or March, I believe. Um, so Sumi got the nod on a decision. Uh, it was actually a split decision, two to one. Uh, phenomenal fight. Alex Corrales turned it on in the third round, I believe. He won the third round in that fight, but uh, finished hard, not quite. Not quite all the way, pulled the trigger on it, got the split decision win. And here we have Alex Corrales. Now come on in here, Alex. Alex Corrales is our current 125 pound champion. Go ahead and say hi, Alex. Go ahead How you guys doing? Good, good. So uh, we were just saying you fought Brian earlier in the year. Yeah. Brian got the split decision win yeah. over you. Yeah. Um, how do you see things going different this time? Uh, I still see it being a really good fight. Um, Brian's uh, pretty well rounded from what I saw, and we got to feel each other out a little bit. Um, but I've worked on a few things, and you know. I, I think I'm going to be able to come away with the win. I, I got a few things I'm, I've been working on, and I, I know I'm going to show it tonight. And uh, it'll be a close fight, but I'm going to get my hand raised. Now, third round in your guys' first fight, you really, really turned it on, knocked him down, if I remember right, a couple times. I couldn't tell if it was a gas issue or if you just put a beating on him and it took an effect come the third round. But does that kind of give you a little bit of hint of where you want to go in this next fight? Uh, yeah, I mean, the third round, I felt pretty good. Um, yeah, he still felt strong, but, I mean, we, we, I mean, that was a pretty active fight all the way through. So, uh, you know, we were both a little tired. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, see, I see if it goes into deep rounds, I see it still being a close one. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll be good with the deeper and deeper we go. Now, the FCFF championship fights are now five rounds. Yeah. You fought before three rounds. How do you see that being a difference in uh, uh, in this fight? You know, my cardio is always pretty good. Um, I haven't gone five rounds yet in any show because usually I fight for the FCFF. But, um, you know, I, I, don't, I guess I couldn't tell you because I've never been there, but I don't see it being a problem. I, I'll push myself through any anything. Now, where are you at right now training? I know you've kind of bounced around a little bit. Yeah, um, well, I moved out to Portland and then I had some family stuff I need to take care of, so I went back to Bend. So I trained in Bend for this. I had um, David Converse come out and stay with me. So he was my main training partner for this camp. And uh, yeah, it's really good to have him, my size. Uh, he's, he's really good on the ground, really good wrestler. So kind of simulate what Brian's gonna do. And you know, I worked on a lot of that stuff. I uh, was in the gym a lot, did a lot of CrossFit, put on some muscle. So yeah, I feel good. What do you walk at? Um, for this fight, I was, I usually am walking around like close to 125, but. I was up at like 135 walking around, so I put on... You so you've put on about 10 wow. pounds of muscle. I put on, yeah, at least 5 pounds of muscle, yeah. Have you made weight yet here tonight? I haven't weighed in yet. I was, okay. I was making weight earlier, <laughs> so I think I'm there. All right, good deal. So without telling us too much about your game plan, obviously his strength is the ground. Um, I think it's pretty fair to say. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to play right into his strength and jam it down his throat, or do you plan on keeping this on your feet as long as you can well, and looking for the big shots? Um, Brian's got good wrestling. I feel like on the ground, my jiu-jitsu is a little better on the actual ground. So if I'm if he gets on top, I you know I feel like I can maybe come out with a submission from off of my back. Um, but I mean, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fight him, and I'm just gonna see how it goes. You know, don't don't be surprised if I go take a shot either. You know, I've been working on my wrestling, and I think people are gonna be surprised on what I bring tonight. Now, this is your first title defense, right? 
How does it, does it feel any different than actually fighting for the title versus defending it the first time? Um, I like it, it feels good. It's already my belt, so I'm just gonna keep it. Thanks, thanks. How do you feel, um, how would you rank uh, Brian in terms of your toughest opponents ever? Um, I think he's really tough. Uh, he's, you know, he's uh, just a mentally, he seemed a really tough guy to be. I hit him pretty hard a few times and he kept coming. Um, He's a really good wrestler, which has been my kryptonite. You know, I've been working on wrestling, wrestling. So, you know, as far as my toughest opponents, he's he's definitely one of the toughest ones I've fought. He's still undefeated, and he's probably got a lot more motivation. He's probably a lot more confident in the cage since we fought. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough fight. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing it. But you bring up a good point. When when uh, we watch you fight, you're very competent on the ground, and he's a very uh, known for his wrestling and for his ground skills. Yeah. What's? Can you tell me a little bit about your wrestling background or your or your? Well, I never actually wrestled, which is oh. one of the things I wow. wish I did. Wow. I never wrestled. I just picked up on wrestling through MMA, um, and that's something I've been trying to work on and work on. But I do a lot of jujitsu, so I work off of my back tons. So just because I knew wrestling was going to be my weak point for a while. I didn't want to make it. If someone were to take me down, I want to feel confident off of my back. and know I can defend myself and even be offensive off of my back, which I have done in my past fights. So, I mean, that's that's something I'm confident in. So if I get taken down, I'm going to be able to hold my own no matter where I go. So. And how long have you been doing the whole mixed martial arts training till this point? Um, Just under three years, probably. Nice. Yeah. That's very impressive with your ground skills. It's not easy to pick up ground skills. A lot of guys who come in with, with uh, you know, without the background in wrestling tend to, um, takes a little while to get up to speed. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I got, I got lucky. I guess I was one of the ones that got to pick up on it quick. I ran, you know, Eric Victor, he was really good at teaching me all the basics from the square one, giving me a good base, keeping, you know, just the, all the things I needed to learn how to do in jiu-jitsu that really mattered. So Victor from Vic, Victor Submission Academy in Bend, Oregon. Right, yeah. Right. Nice. Yeah. Do you think your altitude, you know, I hammer this in um, a lot with, uh, you know, you, you talk about athletes going up doing high altitude camps. How much of an advantage do you think it gives you training in Bend and coming down to Portland where the air is a lot thicker? Um, I mean, I, I hear it gives, you know, a good advantage from people that I've known that come into Bend and train with me. They say they feel a big difference when they get there. It's harder. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it has to feel different, but I usually fight in Portland, so I, I couldn't really tell you because I don't really, you know, I, I feel good when I fight. When I fought in Bend, I fought in Bend once. It was my last, it was like two fights ago, and I, my cardio felt pretty much just the same. So, I'm not, I'm not sure. Nice. Nice. All right, well, good luck tonight. Thank you. 125-pound oh, title defense, Alex Corrales. Thank you, guys. Very good, Alex. Thank you. Good luck tonight. So, and we're waiting for our next guest, so let's kind of go through. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to cut, it, cut you off there. 185-pound title between Jake Smith and John Garcia. This is going to be a bang-up fight. I've been waiting for this one for a while. Um, pretty... Safe to say Jake Smith is, is out of Gladiator. He's fought in uh, the Northwest Championship circuit his entire time. I don't believe he's fought out of there. So it's hard to get a really good gauge of where he's at in the real world. He has looked phenomenal in that league. He's knocked people out. He's got a big, I think his biggest credit um, is a knockout win over a Team Quest guy. Um, it's John Garcia is tough to beat. You know, it's going to be great to see some of the Gladiator guys coming out and fighting, competing in for the FCFF, where you get a wide range of fighters, you get a wide range of clubs. The FCFF, uh, the top amateur uh, MMA organization in the state and probably in the nation, uh, producing all kinds of fighters that have gone on to make the UFC. So when you see the Gladiator, the Northwest Championship guys coming out here, it's going to be really great to see how, how they measure up and how they compete. Now, John Garcia, the last time I saw him was in Tillamook. Uh, the FCFF went on the road to Tillamook, Oregon. Uh, John Garcia fought a very tough Jesse Apodaca that we'll be talking to here uh, in a little while. And I'll tell you what, that fight really shocked me. I might have had Apodaca a little bit favored going into that fight. And Garcia came right out, right into Apodaca's face, put him on his heels, and... Uh, Took, made that fight look easy, which shocked me. 
I'll say that. Jake Smith has a very, very tough fight tonight. How, how is Jake Smith with his hands? We all know uh, Jesse Apodaca, known for having great hands and a uh, power hitter with a lot of speed. How did, how did uh, because I wasn't there for that fight, how did John Garcia look? What, did he win the ground game or was it? Uh, I, I, would, I would consider um, Garcia primarily a wrestler, mm. but he's very confident with his hands. I don't expect, uh, the way I see this fight going, I don't expect Jake Smith to be on his feet for very long, and I say that for two reasons. Number one, Jake Smith does have the possibility of hitting very hard and knocking people out. Um, he also has some pretty hard leg kicks. He likes to go to the lower legs. He doesn't come up very much uh, up high with his legs, but he likes to leg kick, slow people down, and he does have pretty decent hands. He can hit hard. Uh, Honestly, I don't, I don't see Garcia standing up with him for very long. Huh. That'll be a good fight. It'll be interesting to see. Um. Now, we also have another gladiator guy, like you mentioned, uh, Ricky Simon. Rick, Simon. Ricky, uh, Ricky Simon, has, he's a tough competitor. I don't know if you've seen him. I've watched him. Uh, he's got a great wrestling game. He's known for vicious slams. He takes his opponents, picks them up, and drops them right down on the mat. Now, he's fighting Damon Jordan tonight. They've actually, this is actually a rematch. Uh, Simon beat him the first time over in the Northwest Championships. And they're rematching here tonight. Jordan didn't think he got a fair shake, wasn't prepared, took the fight on short notice, and uh, is looking to right that wrong here tonight. Oh, that's going to be a good one then. The atmosphere, you know, it's different from one league to another, and that can play a role in your mental, uh, well, I'm telling you, you, you would know about that. Uh, you know, so it's going to be really interesting. Anytime you take a fight on short notice and don't have the camp building up to it, and you don't put time in for the cardio and peaking at the right point, even at the amateur level, is a gigantic difference. Both these guys have had this fight scheduled. They've both gone through their proper camps now we could possibly see a different outcome. Oh man, that's uh, definitely gonna be a good one. Let's talk a little bit, if you don't mind, just for a second to break it away, uh, to talk about the main card. We're not gonna be able to have Emily uh, on the show, uh, either Emily Corso or Emily Whitmire. Uh, it looks like they're out getting their, you know, after weigh-ins, they tend to wanna go out and eat and we, we've missed them. But uh, let's talk a little bit about that matchup because that is one that I brought my girls here to go see. They're uh, middle school age girls and they love MMA. It's kind of a family sport. Um, well, let's talk about that after this. <laughs> All right, here we have Ray Armstrong. Ray, go ahead and introduce yourself here. Hey, what's up, fellas? Ray Armstrong, um, run Battleground Combat Club in Battleground, Washington. Nice, and you've put quite a few guys in here. But your gym's quite new now. You've transferred over to, yeah. you opened up your own place. Yeah, I, I ran a club for about mm, six years. Uh, went and coached for another club for almost a couple years. And then uh, kind of was thinking of getting out of the coaching game for a bit. Got a different job offer, went and did some different stuff. And then uh, my phone kept ringing, asking me to coach people. So uh, nice. got back in the mix. Uh, and uh, got my buddy John here, and he showed some interest. Started grappling with us. and. Uh, Wanted to get in the fight game. So do you have a group of, a good core group of guys out there yet? Or yeah. are you still in the we're, building process? We're in the, we're in the building fit, f process. We got, we got a lot of guys that with grappling experience that like to just come out there in pure role just to get after it. Uh, you know, spend a little less time hammering out fundamentals and a little more time, you know, trying to push the envelope of the game and stuff. Nice. A lot of guys have a lot of background. Nice. And here you have tonight, you've brought to us John Simone, right? Simone, Did I say yeah. that? John Simone, you're making your debut here tonight. Tell us a little bit, how long have you been training here? Uh, what your fundamentals are? Go ahead and tell us a little bit about it. Um, I've been wrestling for a few years. Uh, I wrestled in high school, and um, I recently, a couple months ago, started getting into jits, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And um, I've uh, been practicing with Ray here, doing a lot of rolling, and just getting ready for this fight. Just preparing. How old are you? I'm 20. So you're fairly fresh out of high school. Were you a pretty competent high school wrestler? Um, yes. And I wrestled club uh, for this club at uh, my high school. I wrestled uh, in my high school my freshman and sophomore year. And um, 
I didn't wrestle my junior and senior year, but I did wrestle with uh, the school, and um, I, w I, I think I am. So you have a good fundamental base, so you'd say your base is more towards wrestling than your stand-up? Yes. So how has your stand-up come along at uh, your gym so far? Oh, uh, it's come a long, long way. Ray's helped me a lot, uh, and my uh, stand-up's getting better every day, I'm just practicing, so, yeah. John's one of those guys, the natural athlete, so he's got those, he's got hard, hard hands. If throws light, it's hard. If throws hard, it's really hard. <laughs> where, where are you most comfortable at? Uh, on the ground, wrestling. Where, where do you prefer? Do you like the stand-up? A, a lot of wrestlers come in here and they say, hey, I'm a wrestler, but I, like, I prefer to stand up and bang. Is that your case, or do you prefer to come right out, get it down to the ground where you're comfortable and end the fight? Uh, I prefer to take it down to the ground and just pound it out. Uh, I like submissions on the ground, and I like um, just taking it to the ground from the beginning. Um, I'm not trying to stand up right away right now um, because I'm fairly new to standing up. So, yeah, just taking it down to the ground right now is my game plan. Now, what weight do you walk at usually? Uh, 195 to 200. Nice. And have you weighed in yet? Yeah. What did you make weight at? Uh, 181 and a half. Wow, so quite a bit under. Yeah. Quite a bit. So is that like just first time jitters, a big cut, or was just everything right on cue and you just lost more than what you thought you were going to cut for this fight? Um, yeah, this is my first time actually cutting a lot, so uh, I wasn't used to it and I cut a lot more than I thought I should. Uh, I wanted to. I was, I was trying to get to about 184, but I ended up cutting a few more pounds. It turns out he cuts pretty easy, you know, just an athlete. We, we, uh, we went in for our cut yesterday afternoon and just shredded it off. It was a nice day for it. Yeah, yeah. Now, who are you fighting tonight? Travis Gwynn Gwyn. out of L.A. Boxing, um, which leads me to another question. Uh, obviously, another guy out of L.A. Boxing, you're going to be more comfortable on your ground. Have you done anything to prepare specifically for a stand-up fighter? You know, we, um, I personally feel that, you know, their first four or five fights, the other guy doesn't even know what he's going to do. We don't need to really worry about that. We just go out there and do our game plan. You know, uh, I've always coached to finish fights. So, uh, you know, our game plan is, you know, walk, march across the ring, touch gloves, and get to work. Nice. Yeah. So right now I'm focusing on what I'm going to do, not really on what he's doing. So I'm planning on taking it to the ground, and um, that's where I feel most, most comfortable. So that's what I'm smiling. And how, I, I forget, how long have you been now training, working out? Uh, I've been training for a few months. Nice. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a nice. long time coming, yeah. Nice. I'm jumping in head first into the deep pool. Right on, That's yeah. good to see. All right. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you very much. We're looking yeah. forward yeah. to witnessing your Yeah, good luck. good luck tonight, guys. For Thanks, sure. guys. Appreciate Thank the you. opportunity. Try and appreciate everything you do for the sport. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks you guys. Well, that's going to be a good one, eh? That is going to be a good fight. Brown versus stand-up. I've seen, um, I actually saw Ray posted a uh, picture of him on Facebook, and I saw it, and he looked gigantic. For an 85, he is one big kid for an 85. I expected, you know, I'm pretty good at looking at people and guessing their weight. Uh, at the picture I saw before he had started cutting, I would say that he probably looked 225-ish. He looked big you know we heard from him he's walking around a little over 200 right now but uh he's a monster at 85 he has bright things ahead of him he just looks like one of those gifted athletes you know works out you know stays in shape even when he's not working out probably but it's nice all right next we have here is brian now brian i'm probably gonna ruin your is it tatsumi <laughs> Tsutsumi, close Tsutsumi. enough. Tsutsumi, all right. Tsutsumi. So you're fighting tonight, Alex Kralis. Correct. Uh, you've beat him once already. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see this? Now, that was a three-round fight tonight. You're going five rounds with him. Um, third round on all the judges, basically, he, they thought he took the third round of that fight. Mm -hmm. um, there was a definite change from you beating him up in the first two rounds 
to that third round, how's that gonna affect tonight when it goes five rounds? Are you prepared for that? Did you gas out? Was it damage? What took your toll? I don't think I, it really was gassing out. <clears throat> I think I knew I just won the first two matches, but I played a little safe. Can you um, maybe but, um, yeah, yeah. get a little closer to the mic? But my conditioning is a lot better um, than what it was. I feel a lot better. My weight cut, my diet, and everything. I changed this past fight, so I feel real good now. Um, so definitely I'll go the five rounds, and I, I'll be able to go with ease, I think. Now you're out of Impact. Impact has a phenomenal record here at the mm -hmm. FCFF and everywhere for that matter. Um, tell us a little bit how your training camp has gone and what you've specifically geared yourself for Alex, if anything. I mean, I haven't really changed everything. Every single week is the same thing. I do kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, um, jiu-jitsu. Um, I do everything and every single week is the same for me. I just up my um, intensity of my training. Um, went to Quest once, worked out with some different people here and there. Um, we brought some other people in, so it's looking good. Nice. So, <laughs> without giving too many game plan details, where do you think you match up better than Alex? Do you think you're better on your feet? Do you think you're better on the ground? Do you think you're better in the clinch, on the grind game? I would say definitely on the ground, um, but I think my um, striking has gotten a lot better. It, it has improved. Um, when I fought Alex, that was my second fight, and I think I've been training for maybe five months before that. Now I have a year wow. under my belt, I think. So I think I've come a long way. So. That's phenomenal for that yeah. first fight. You're only training for five months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is impressive. Wow. So uh, are you belted in jits by chance? Uh, I'm just a white belt because I hardly do jits. Well, I, yeah, I try well, to you're, you're a year in. That's, yeah. As I say, that's pretty impressive. So um, how do you see this fight go in five rounds? You know, we'll probably start standing up like we usually do. We'll probably end up on the ground somehow, whether he tries to shoot on me um, or whether I shoot on him. Um, and then we'll go from there. I'm pretty much, most of my fights, I want to say like 85, 90% of the time, I'm on top of the guys. So that's what the game plan is. But, you know, it always can change. So Now, how many fights have you had now? I've had four. Four fights. So have they all been in the FCFF? Uh, no, they've been different ones here and there. So Knucklehead, um, some in Washington. Nice. Who was your last opponent, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Jesse Lane. Wow, okay. Jesse Lane. Yeah. yeah. And He's that an was MMA fight, veteran. That was the fight out for our knucklehead, correct? Correct. Nice. How did that fight go? Uh, I won it, so I won the title there, So and I won all five rounds. So, so you're the knucklehead 125-pound, uh, or was that the 135-pound? 125. 125-pound uh, champion, wow. Mm -hmm. how, and how did that fight end? Um, it was a unanimous decision, so I nice. uh, pretty much kicked the crap out of his leg, and that's what I think took the big toe on him. So Was that a three-round or a five-round five fight? Round. Wow, so you've gone five rounds before. Uh -huh. I don't believe Alex has gone <laughs> Not yet. five rounds, so yeah. that'll kind of be in deep water going those championship rounds with him. Yeah. But he looks like he's in good shape, so um, like I said, my shape has just the best I've ever felt, so for cut, um, cutting weight and everything, so I feel good. Now, you've only been training MMA for a year now. What's your background? Were you a wrestler? Were you into martial arts before you came here? Have you only been training for, you know, this a combat sport for that long? No, I'm a wrestler. I wrestled through college, so I've oh, had nice. that base. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been in competition before, um, so there's nothing really different besides the punches and kicks and stuff. So. Right. Nice. Well, Brian, we can't wait to see you fight. Uh, yeah, Alex is a tough wait. opponent, and yeah. this is a rematch for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that uh, you have something to prove here, wanting to take the belt away mm -hmm. from Alex and the FCFF, and then that'll add another belt to your, uh, if you can pull it off. Yeah, that's a go. All right, all right, good luck tonight, Brian. Thanks. Brian, Thank good luck. Can't wait to see it. Oh, here we have Miss Whitmire. You want to come and talk to us for a minute? All right. <laughs> All right. So it looks like you've gotten a little bit of food. Oh yeah. You cut. What did you make your weight at? One twenty-three. I didn't. I didn't have to cut any weight for this fight. I was walking around at one twenty-three this whole time. Um, I didn't eat breakfast though. I should have. Enoch made me buckwheat blueberry pancakes and potatoes for breakfast. So I have a place in at home. Wow. So you've already had breakfast, even. You still no, made weight. No, I haven't. Had oh, 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 I should have because okay. I weighed in at one twenty-three. So I could have down two pounds of pancakes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, where are you at now? Um, at Animal House in Hubbard with Enoch Wilson.
cool. Tell us a little bit how that training's gone for you, because you're new, this is your first fighter of that new camp? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was doing a lot of jumping around between leaving Rise Above and then um, coming to Animal House. I was at Impact and Beaverton for a while, and then I trained also at Quest and Tualatin, and that's actually how I met Enoch, and then I was still kind of jumping around. I did um, a lot of my conditioning at Rise Above for this fight, and then this last month, um, Enoch actually ended up meeting a roommate, and then I need, my lease was at, ended up my apartment, and so then I said, he's like, you know, if you need a place to go, and I said, yeah, I moved in, and then I just started training with him, and just the camp over there, like, it's a new camp, but like all the guys like caught on so well. And Enoch's such a good coach. He like really breaks everything down, and like we're always building off you know one thing and going on to another. And like his judo, his jits, and like his kickboxing is amazing. And like um, there's some good wrestlers out there. I've been working out with. I've been working on my wrestling a lot too. So I'm excited to have an MMA fight since I've been working on that. Now, bring him on over. They, here, here's yeah. Enoch. I was about to say they've had. We've seen. Animal House and quite a few different shows around here in the state and they've done, I don't remember an Animal House guy losing right off the top of my head and we've probably seen 10, 15 fights of the guy. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about your gym, Eric. Uh, yeah, we've got a phenomenal location. I'm very, very fortunate. I've got some good business partners. Um, we got a huge location. Um, the location it itself is actually awesome. It's predominantly Hispanic and Russian community, so everybody's natural fighters, salt of the earth people, just hard workers. Um, Got a, a, a huge, beautiful facility, pro boxing ring. We got a big cage. We got nice. bag racks, all the cardio equipment, uh, Olympic pro style. And where are you out of? Where is it at? Actually in Hubbard. Yeah, we're, Hubbard. we're in Hubbard. Yeah, right off 99. Um, you know, you can't miss us if you take 99 out there. You should um, come down there and check it out. This, the amount of space they had, the way they utilized it is amazing. Nice. Yeah. So how? So for those people that are watching this, how do you have a website or a, a Facebook page that yeah. they can look you up on? Ko Fitness slash Animal House MMA um, is our, our dot com is our website. Um, it's under construction still right now. We have got a lot of changes going on, so it's still under construction. But yeah, anytime um, anybody can make it out to Hubbard. I know it sounds like it's out there, just a little bit south of Wilsonville. It's really only about 20 minutes, 25 minutes from uh, you know Portland and like the wow. Tigard area. Mm -hmm. I live in Tigard. But it's yeah, phenomenal. it doesn't take very long to get there at all, and it's a good drive. It's not bad at all. I mean, I drive an extra 10 minutes to train with super awesome people. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Emily, this fight now, FCFF has transferred over the five three-minute round format. Yeah. You've never gone five rounds before, right? I've never right? done five-round fight. I'm actually kind of more excited to do a five-round fight because in there, like, by the end of round two, I'm like, I only have one more round left. Like, and then it kind of puts more pressure on you. And then now I have five full rounds to work, you know? And so, um, you know, and I, a lot of my conditioning stuff, I've been getting stronger towards the end of the, um, you know, the time. So I'm excited to get in there and go all five. So you, know? you feel like you're ready, especially with the new training, to go in there and just bust out oh, yeah. five rounds just fine. Oh, yeah. No, my, I... So vascular. Wait till you see. It's yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> see it's pretty awesome. Right. That's how I know I'm in good shape because I can like tell by the way like my body's looking and everything. So I'm excited. Now Emily Corso is known for being mostly a ground. We haven't seen a whole lot of stand up from her. Mm -hmm. um, first off, what do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself more of a stand up person or a ground person? Um, now that's kind of a hard question because I started out just going to an MMA, MMA gym full board. So I started learning everything all together. Um, I did take to the grappling a little bit more at first, but now my stand up, I definitely feel like I'm kind of favoring that more. But then there's days when I go into the gym and I just, you know, I can grapple all day and I do really well and I really love the ground. So it's just kind of depends on like the day or the mood I'm in. Like, I don't know, I'm well run in all areas and work on my wrestling a lot now and so, um, I just feel comfortable. If we, she wants to stand with me, which most people don't, um, I'm fine with that. I would actually prefer that more because I've been wanting a stand-up MMA fight <laughs> now, for a while now. people used to call you the Blonde Bomber. Yeah. That used to kind of be, that was like the nickname that was forced on you for a little bit. Yeah. And, and now you're pretty much comfortable everywhere. So, without giving game plan details, you know she's mostly a ground person. You're going to come out and shove it right down her throat and take her down to the um. ground? Wreck shot. <laughs> Rec shop. No, well, From the first bell to the last, regardless of which round that last bell sounds. <laughs> He's more excited than I am, I think. <laughs> but um, just, I lost my last two fights, or MMA fights, um, you know, 
by splits and they were against tough wrestlers who were like, you know, did a lot of cage stuff with me mm -hmm. and I get stuck there. And so I've worked a lot in that area as well. And so I really wouldn't be surprised if she came out and tried to run me up against the cage and tried to play it safe that way. But I mean, if she wants to do that, that's fine by me because I'm well, just going to uh, reverse uh, her. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty much all areas that I've think that they would want to take this fight with me if I was them and I'd want to take the fight in that area with me I worked on like and you're ready yeah I definitely did a lot of fine-tuning and preparation for this one this is phenomenal she's in great shape you guys just wait until tonight the actions will speak much louder than words she will get stronger as it goes on she's gonna wreck shop no doubt about it there's nothing that this chick's gonna bring that's gonna surprise her and she's gonna pay for everything she tries to do this is one of those fights that I'm pretty confident in saying is gonna go five rounds um, I don't yeah. I don't see I don't see this fight stopping her no fourth round it won't make it out of the fourth guaranteed <laughs> right. if it you, goes you to the fourth it won't first. make it out of the fourth I would just like to say good luck tonight and I want you to know that I brought my two daughters out to oh, come and watch the female main event. Awesome. Nice. And so it's a family affair tonight. We got That's everybody good. coming yeah. out. I totally respect Corso 100%. I'm friends with Nick and a lot of people over the at her camp. And so yeah. I totally have tons of respect for Corso and I plan for a five round fight. I don't plan on finishing her. Um, I'm planning on going in for all five rounds. And if something happens to where you know, I can finish it sooner. I'm gonna take it, but and I mean, I'm I'm ready for <laughs> I'm ready for a war. You know, I'm definitely don't think she's. I know she's been wanting this belt as long as I have. So we're both going out for the kill tonight. Nice, very awesome. Thank you very much, Thank Nina. You, sir. Thank Emily, you, sir. Emily, good luck. Thanks. Look up Animal House on Facebook. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. No thank, you, thank you, sir. Look forward to it. Man, that is going to be one heck of a main event. That is I going really am excited to, be to see that fight. Great. I can't wait. Next yeah. up, we have Jacob Mitchell. Come on in here, Jacob, and sit down with us for a minute. Jacob Mitchell is out of Team Quest. And the word on the street Jacob's about this guy boy. is he is the next big thing. And Aaron Hall, if you know, uh, he match makes a lot of the sport fight cards. He is very confident in this young man, so much to where uh, he's taken on, after this fight, a guy that has 16 fights, I believe is 14 and two, after this fight, early September, a lot of confidence. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Jacob Mitchell. I fight out of Team Quest. Matt Luna is my coach and Aaron Hall's the best guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tell us a little bit about your background. I know they said you had wrestled somewhat, um, but I, from what I've heard, you're an outstanding wrestler. Did you just wrestle in high school? Are you into college? What's your background? Uh, I've wrestled since I was five at uh, Peninsula Wrestling. Coach Roy Pittman's been coaching nice. me ever since I was little. Uh, I double All-American last year at Nationals Universities and uh, took third in Greco and seventh in freestyle. Wow. And, wow. Uh, now I'm wrestling for Clackamas Community College, and after that I hope to go pro. Nice. Nice. So how long have you been at Team Quest? Uh, three months. Wow. Yeah. And this is your second fight? Third. I had a fight last Friday, and the guy didn't come out after the first round. He was all beat up. Where was yeah. that at? Somewhere in Washington. Nice. Nice. Wow. So you're looking to keep undefeated, third fight. Um, how tall are you? 6'2". 6'2", so pretty decent height for a heavyweight. What do you walk at? 240 right now. 240. And yeah. you're pretty cut up 240. Not yet. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> it looked pretty impressive uh, when we saw you earlier. Who was your first fight here at the FCFF? I don't know. They just put him in front of me and I fight him. I don't remember, but it was pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a, a pretty decorated wrestling pass. What's your stand-up background? Have you, uh... Oh, my stand-up? Uh, I boxed a little bit, and I've just been uh, working, working on the boxing a little bit with Matt. And um, just doing whatever Matt tells me to do, really, because the wrestling's good. And then I work with uh, Fabiano. He's a world oh, yeah, uh, yeah. champ in jiu-jitsu. So he's my, he's my training partner, and Brandon Fitz is my training partner. And uh, I've been working on pads with Terrence Williams. That's, like, my best friend. And so we just do a lot of, a lot of different stuff, and it's coming, it's coming real easily. I learn fast. Uh, it sounds like it. Uh, you already beat up your last opponent in the first round. He went and come out for round two. Oh, his eye was messed up. And, uh, it was cut. So that, that sounds like it was a stand up, or did you take him down to the ground and do the damage? I dropped him four times, and then I, so I, then I let him back up because Matt told me to let him back up. <laughs> so are you, are you confident on your feet? You know, a lot of wrestlers come in here. 
They say I'm a wrestler and they have a wrestling background, but they want to stand and bang you until they get hit, then you'll move in for the shots. Are you competent? Are you confident on your feet? Do you like that better than having to fall back on a wrestling and you fall back on a wrestling as a way to win the fight? Or do you like to come out and go, hey, we're gonna bang, and if I have to take you down, I will? I'm just gonna win. Yeah, whatever I have to do to win, I mean, I'm gonna win. Like Fabiano, you guys know Fabiano, he's a big guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Powerful uh, guy too. Yeah, he's he's saying I've gotten a hundred hundred percent better with my hands and uh since when I first started three months ago. Nice. And uh we go out of that practice a lot and so it's it's real fun. Yeah, well I know they have a lot of confidence. From what I've heard they have a lot of confidence in you. I'm looking forward to tonight. Do you know very much about your opponent? Nah, just that he's gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what he weighed in at or how tall saw, he is? Or? Yeah, I saw it on the scale. He's like 6'1", and like 249 or something. A little, just a tiny bit bigger than me. Nice. So uh, I'm not really worried about like my opponent because the only thing I can control is myself. And so. Right. Nice. Nice. Well, can't wait to see yeah, that one tonight, too. That's another battle. one. Battle. Ones that I really have my eye on. And uh, like I said, after this fight, you're looking at your first getting your first amateur belt on September 8th against a, what, 16-fight veteran that's pretty tough, too. So this will be a good eye-opener for the people that haven't had their eyes open before on what you're capable of. And then after that, are you planning on going pro, or are you planning on holding on a little bit longer? I'm um, wrestling in, uh, at Clackamas Community College this year. Nice. And uh, I graduate, I get my degree in uh, February. So after February, I was talking to Matt about going pro. And so probably in February. Awesome, awesome. Well, congratulations. Cool. Yeah, very good luck tonight. On, uh, I don't think you need on your it, degree but when you, when you yeah. get it. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Very good. Great. That's Thank you very much. Mitchell, go ahead. Do you have any sponsors or anything, or do you want to thank anyone? No, if anyone anybody or? wants to sponsor me, they would be glad to, though. <laughs> All right, you hurry here. How can they get a hold of you if they want to sponsor you? Contact Matt Linlin. Matt Linlin, Team Quest, Gresham Team Quest. Pretty easy guy to get a hold of. Call down there, talk to him, all that kind of thing. All right, thank you very much, Jacob. Right, good luck you. tonight. You guys have a good day. All right, you Hey, too. thank you. Yeah, I'm wise. Uh, we're, it's noon now, but we start a little bit late. Yeah. We can, uh, you know, it's going to be a hell of a card. Now, there's a lot of good fighters. There I mean, is a lot of talent on this card. You know, we haven't even touched the undercard much, but there is a lot of, especially on this card, I like these type of cards. Um, you look through the undercard, and there's a lot of like brand new, fresh um, guys that have between no fights that are making their debut and three to four fights tonight that are could be the next big up and comers to make impacts on the top five in the weight, you know, each of the weight classes around here, Oregon. Uh, it's exciting to see that type of thing. Now, what let's, um Dylan Atkinson was scheduled to fight tonight. Have they found an opponent for him that was willing to step up, being as his uh, opponent backed out? They did, and this is the second time uh, Dylan Atkinson was set to fight Just Moore. Uh, last FCFF, Just Moore had an issue to where he couldn't be here. Um, Just Moore was supposed to fight him again. This FCFF, um, from what I understand, Just Moore got injured. Um, very sad. We hope he recovers, but no. I I was looking. There were a hundred different people looking for an opponent for Dylan Atkinson, but Dylan Atkinson right now is number one, um, according to the rankings, at 135 pounds, and he is not an easy guy to find a fight for last minute notice. And you know that's kind of the sad part about being ranked number one in the Northwest is no one wants to say, hey, I haven't had a training camp, raise their hand and say, I'll get in the cage with this guy and fight a nine and one kid. So sad, but no, there's no fight for Dylan Atkinson tonight. Yeah, that's a, that's a bummer just because um, it's been a while since I've seen him fight, but he looked so good. I mean, uh, amazing fighter, amazing ground game. And uh, it's too bad. I know Jesse Lane is a talented fighter. We wish him speed recovery. But that was a that was really a fight I was looking forward to. It's a good thing that this card is so stacked. Whenever you come to an FCFF event, you're you're going to have uh, numerous talented fighters matching up against each other. Now another fight I'm really looking forward to tonight is another girl fight on the card, Hillary Van Orm. Oh yeah. She's at a Team Quest. 
we saw her here before. Um, I forget the girl that she fought here before, but it was an absolute slugfest. They didn't hit the ground. She likes to push people up against the cage and absolutely bomb on them. Big punches, big knees. You don't see that very much um, in the girls' uh, 205 pound division, I guess you would call it. But uh, I'm excited to see that. She's fighting Leanne Foster out of solid base jujitsu. We've seen a lot of the solid base people come out here. They are a newer uh, transition to mixed martial arts school, I believe. We've only been seeing them for about the last six months here in the FCFF, but they always come ready to fight. They always put on good performances, and that's another kind of key matchup that I'm looking for forward to fight-wise tonight. Oh, yeah. I haven't had uh, a chance to get all of the updates to the card, but um, I, I know I've been waiting to see the FCF, this FCFF event for a while. Now, another one I have earmarked, too, is Nathan Allen versus Jesse Apodaca. We talked a little bit earlier uh, about Jesse Apodaca um, with John Garcia and Tillam a couple months ago. How he kind of got ran over a little bit. It didn't look like the normal, you know, you can never tell if it's, hey, did they have an off night or is this other kid just match up so well against them that they can come in and absolutely dominate them um, like they did. But last time we saw Jesse Apodaca um, go up against John Garcia, it did look pretty. I know he's here tonight against Nathan Allen from Team Quest to win. Here we have Team Quest, which is world renowned against the live MMA, who not only um, won Gym of the Year uh, this last year, but also MMA Coach of the Year with Nick Gilardi, which is a pretty phenomenal thing for them to scoop up both of those. Um, I talked to him earlier. He said he is ready to go. That's the that is my dark horse fight of the night tonight. Well, I can't wait to see that one. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen Jesse fight. I actually missed his fight against John Garcia, and um, he's always impressive. Uh, one of the more impressive fights uh, he fought. Uh, oh man, I am drawing a blank. Uh, the tall guy with really good jits. Uh, who? God, I can't remember. Anyhow, Jesse has great hands. He's a striker, and I love watching him fight. It don't matter where he's fighting, who he's fighting. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Uh, uh, one more fight that I have kind of earmarked on here. Um, Jake Ashard versus uh, Michael Delgado. Ashard, uh, we've seen a couple times. I think, I believe only once here in the FCFF, but he's fought around the state here. I believe he's... I believe he's two and two, uh, but he has great hands. He has great hands. I watched Jake's last fight, and he destroyed his opponent. I mean, his boxing and his stand-up is really, uh, it's a way above average. Where he's struggled a little bit has been in the ground game, but uh, I believe he's been working on that. His last fight didn't go to the ground, and he just destroyed his opponent. He has great hands. He's looked good. He's fighting a Team Quest kid, Michael Delgado, from Team Quest. I don't remember a whole lot out of Delgado, but, you know, Team Quest, they're going to have good stand-up, they're going to have a great ground game, and everywhere in between. Their transitions are always pretty smooth. They work and work and work, that type of thing. And their clinch is also always, you know, top of the knot. So that's going to be uh, a very good fight to see. We'll be able to see if Jake Hashard, if Delgado has a great ground game, if he's a wrestler, we'll see if he can sprawl and kind of beat those demons of once it hits the ground he's in deep water and in trouble um, that could be another fight that is a showstopper yeah i can't wait to see that one um i agree can, can agree more um do we uh the sponsors do you have any sponsors you would like to thank just mass media for doing this oh yeah i like to um you know um I know one of the sponsors that sponsor this event, Kershaw Knives. They're always a longtime sponsor of the SCFF. I want to send a shout out to them. Uh, I'd also like to send out a couple shout outs to some sponsors that we have. Oregon Web Press out of Albany, Oregon, uh, known for quality printing. They print a lot of publications. 
Also, USTacticalSupply.com. If you uh, know anybody who is in law enforcement or if you know anybody who's serving in our military, have them go to USTacticalSupply.com. They have top of the line equipment. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a lot of folks have heard stories about they, uh, some of the standard issue equipment is not as good in, even in the United States military, which is one of the best militaries in the world. And uh, some parents have actually gone to USTacticalSupply.com to buy top of the line equipment and send them to their, their children or their loved ones who are serving uh, across seas. And finally, I would very much like to thank all men and women in uniform who serve for our country, um, not just in the military, but also in law enforcement and in various industries around the United States. Uh, but we very much uh, want to say thank you for your service. All right, and thanks again to Mass Media. Um, go there, fighter stats, pictures, videos, all that kind of fun stuff, hit it up, www.massmedia.com, and join us tonight here at Rumble at the Roseland 65. And don't forget to go to splitdecisionmma.com for the latest in rankings. Are your rankings posted right now? Not yet, and I believe the rankings are in transition. I believe they're going to be posted on the radio show. Okay. Well, wow. ma mass media is would like to post your rankings if that uh, that's what our plan is. So we're going to take sure. your rankings and we're going to use those as the official rankings for all the fights that we cover. All right, top five in Oregon, top ten in heavyweight because sometimes the big boys go up to super heavyweight. Otherwise, top five, and I believe we're trying to get in. A woman's 125, 135, 145 top five. That's tough because there's not very many women, but I put it out on the ballot this time. Well, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Check out the FCFF. Uh, doors open at 6, fights start at 7. We'll see you at the Roseland in Portland. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.